Say hello to a Carnival Red 1965 Lotus Elan S3 Coupe, the car that Professor Gordon Murray recently acclaimed the most beautiful automobile ever built. Light, supple, agile and with a low centre of gravity, this Elan was originally owned by Ian Scott Watson and was assembled in Scotland by Jock McBain's Garage. Our guest in the Elan for a lap around Royal Richmond Park in Surrey this English summer's morning is the newly crowned 2016-17 Formula E champion Lucas Degrassi, multilingual, multi-talented and endlessly enthusiastic about the future of motorsport across a broad spectrum of technologies and disciplines. Congratulations. Thanks man, thank you. It was a... It's about the... Is that, it's got to be the biggest thing in your career. And I never won a FIU world title. No. I won uh, Macau. many races, Macau, when I finished second in GP2, second in WEC, second in Le Mans. And this was amazing though, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was, uh, let's say, the least expected of the titles, because by mid-season we were really... Yeah. And, and although it would have been nice to have won the manufacturers, it's kind of cool to win the drivers. <laughs> Because it actually reflects really well on you. Yeah, to be honest, we this year we didn't have the best car by far. Yeah. Last year was a bit easier because the, we, it was only Renault and us. This year we had four Renaults on the grid, with Tech Cheetah also being Renault. Yeah. We had DS, which was quite strong. We had Mahindra, which was quite strong too. So every race we had uh, eight cars that could win the race. Last year was pretty much myself and uh, Gwen, uh, or less and Renault. Or and there's Renault. quite a lot of difference, isn't there? Which is nice. Uh, it's it's not enough difference that the, it makes the racing boring. Yeah. But there is enough difference that, of course, you have on average a better performance. Yeah. What I I mean, I've only really started to discover Formula E in the last year or so, purely because when you're involved in Formula One flat out, it's kind of part of the social idiom, isn't it? Nothing else matters and, and they have that sort of view of life. But then you start to have a look around and for me the greatest thing about Formula E is that it actually gives drivers like you an opportunity to uh, to have a career, you know? And, and the, the standard of driving now in Formula E is very high. It's brilliant in terms of the number of drivers you've got. Yeah. Who should be in Formula One and aren't, but it's very competitive and it's very high standard. And it's going to get better now. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I think there is uh, more driving, more drivers uh, making good money in uh, Formula E than Formula One. Yeah. If you're counting, of course, the paid drivers. Well, if Formula E didn't exist, what would you be doing? Uh, that's the other way of putting it, you know? Well, I did the WEC with Audi. Exactly. Or DTM. But, you know, but it's well, not still that many races. This is such a great thing that it's happened for the sport, I think, and it's going as well as it has. I could be doing IndyCar. Exactly. There are other championships you could be doing in Rally Cross. Of course, but this is much better than all of those. Yeah. This is kind of thing. Formula E is uh, it's, it's growing quite a lot. How do you know Richmond Park? You lived in London for a long time, I guess. I lived in London, yes. Formula 3 times. Well, I drove up to 2009 when I was in F1. and. Uh, I came here cycling quite a bit. It's, it's a, a great place for cycling. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the loop is 10k. I did a couple of. Uh, I did actually twice a duathlon a race, which you cycle and run. Did you? At Brilliant. Richmond. I did. Uh, yeah, I came here a couple of times. It's a great park. You know, recently quite a few cyclists have been done for speeding here. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> they've got a 20 mile an hour speed limit. <laughs> And they wait at the bottom of the hill. That's London now. Where do you live now? I live in Monaco. And you're going to stay based there for the rest of this season, year now, or are you going to spend some time in Brazil? I've been in Monaco. Brazil? Ah, no, I'm I'm traveling a lot. I have some other commitments that I'm doing: London, uh, Germany, Brazil. So I'm traveling a lot now. Yeah. But it's, 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 and just now with the title, it's getting even more busy, but outside of motorsport, I have a couple of other business that I take over, that I take care of. 
when you're driving, and I know you obviously have so much experience in Formula E compared with anybody else on the planet, what is the single most important thing from a technical point of view when you're driving the car? So, uh, well, Formula E itself it changed a lot in the last uh, three years. It went from a single making series to a the series with the most amount of manufacturers already on the planet, mm. more than F1. Yeah, for now you have how many? Three, four manufacturers. Yeah, exactly, really. yeah. uh, Formula E you have already six proper manufacturers this year and by 2018, 19 you have uh, Porsche and Mercedes and BMW coming. Yeah. So we're going to have nine manufacturers, proper ones. And when I say manufacturers, I'm not counting the startups, just uh, proper OEMs. So the, 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 the championship is changing a lot. It has changed from, like I said, season one with more or less everybody with the same hardware to now with people developing their own, uh, developing their own uh, the motors, inverters, uh, whatever you can you can develop. And the budgets have gone from three million to thirty million now. Uh, and so it's still, I think, it, from F1, if you take the manufacturer of the chassis and aerodynamics out should be comparable to a, to a mid to a small team. The problem with F1 is the aerodynamic development, which costs a yeah, lot. Yeah. The rest uh, it's quite uh, limited with the in-season development, I guess, with the motors. And the, okay, developing a Formula 1 engine is extremely expensive too. And that's why you have so little manufacturers. Yeah, of course. But um, yeah, Formula E gives you the, the freedom to develop uh, the right parts that could be commercial relevant. Mm. And I have a fixed aerodynamics, so you have a more uh, level field, and then you can have more interesting races. <laughs>